Well, thanks everyone. It is great to be back at another automation fair, and uh, we've got a pretty big room uh, here today. Um, thank you uh, for the interest. Uh, thanks for coming back to renew friendships, to learn about new technology, to make connections, and really to be inspired, I think, uh, by manufacturing and the opportunities that we have in front of us. I've been to a lot of automation fairs, um, over 30, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to do something that we haven't done uh, before at automation fair. We've got a pretty big room here, and uh, most of you know, um, have been in stadiums where uh, we've done the wave before, and we're going to try to do the wave in this room here. So if we're going to start at the far end in the count of three, I want to see one wave going across the room. So one two, three. Here we go. <laughs> All right. There we go. A, a, a bucket list item. <laughs> so fantastic. Look, we're going to have a lot of fun this week. Um, but what we're doing is, uh, is really meaningful and it's important. When you think about what manufacturers do, what you do, what you enable, you know, we've seen over the last few years just how important it is. Um, it's about having enough food for people. It's about clean water. It's about medicine. It's about energy. So what we do matters. And that's really the theme of this automation fair. It's about making it matter. And as we do that, you know, there's, there's nothing less at stake than really expanding human possibility as you think about what the end result is of what we're doing. It's important to our economies as well, not just from a personal standpoint, but when you think about the role that manufacturing plays in the vital core of our economies, that's another thing to think about. And you're right in the middle of it and you're seeing state-of-the-art technology uh, in action over the next few days. So we've been, we've been busy uh, for the last few years. To be sure, there's been a lot of defense uh, being played to make ourselves more resilient, but we're very proud of what we have built and what we have bought over the last few years to put together what we think is world-class, second-to-none assets in the world of production. And it's all about driving the outcomes that you want <coughs> from manufacturing. We heard in the video, optimizing production and empowering people, building resilience, driving sustainability, and accelerating digital transformation. But our focus now to bring those to play is to integrate all the pieces, driving inefficiencies out, making it easiest to apply, to design, to maintain. And that's really our focus uh, for the next couple of years, is not so much adding new, brand new capabilities from the outside, but to take the things that are already on our internal roadmaps that we have bought and making them work well together. Because I think the opportunity to reduce risk in these systems by doing a really complete job, finishing the swing, if you will, of bringing all these things together is our best opportunity to make, to make life easier for you in the automation implementation world. You know, when we look at our offerings, it's about taking the traditional sources of value with these new ways to make you even more competitive, and again, bringing them together. And if you think about the broad areas of this, it's about production design, production control, production logistics with material movement, in independent car technology, the mobile robots that you'll hear more about uh, going forward. It's about providing software applications to make the most of the data that's a natural byproduct of these automation processes and to use edge and cloud 
form factors, if you will, because both are important, and we'll talk more about that as, as the afternoon goes on. And then, of course, to be able to apply the expertise of people, our people, you, who understand what really has to happen on the plant floor through the life cycle of these manufacturing solutions. And when you look at the edge and cloud information solutions, we see lots of opportunity both to add additional value to existing locations, but also to be able to provide a broader set of solutions to new green fields. And of course, in America, there's a lot of discussion about the additional capex that's being applied for new installations. We had a recent win we talked about at Kikoman, where we're applying Plex along with our traditional automation for more complete factory of the future implementation. Thermo Fisher, the drug maker, with their pharma suite implementation to help them with their pharma 4.0 strategy. So we're proud of the real world examples that we can show where we're taking these newer technologies, Plex, Fix, Factory Talk Design Studio, and applying them to add value in both existing installations as well as new green fields. <coughs> and we believe that there's tremendous additional opportunities to expand on these early applications going forward. Now that we've built a really strong internal capability to design additional software applications, the concept of having edge and cloud-based applications working together is really powerful. This idea of the resilient edge to be able to serve as the data broker for information that's moving up to and down from the cloud recognizes the realities of working on a plant floor. You can't always rely on a persistent cloud connection so how are you going to be able to hold that data and also to be able to reduce problems with latency at the edge as well? And certainly, you're going to have opportunities to go much deeper in that as you see what's on the floor and as you hear from some of our other presenters. It's really about a steady drumbeat of moving from our traditional source of automated control, inputs, logic, and outputs, to moving something more like autonomous, and the key there is to put systems in place that can learn. And we have examples all the way through the tech stack that we're going to be talking about of adding additional elements of autonomy. Certainly a big piece of that is the use of artificial intelligence. We strongly feel, and this is based on conversations with many customers, that our best opportunities for adding real value to AI is making it a part of existing workflows. Not to go in and to look at requiring ripping out existing processes, because that's just too risky. As I mentioned before, risk is the enemy of new investment in new technology. But being able to add AI to traditional sources of value at the sensor level, with vision AI processing techniques, at the logic level with Logics AI, at the software level using Guardian AI to take information directly from drives and bring it to asset management software like Fix, within Plex for demand planning. All of these are real world examples adding value today by the introduction of AI to help make these processes more autonomous. We take a systems approach and we recognize the reality that the pieces don't all just seamlessly fit together yet. And so people, consulting resources, expertise to help you better define your business problems and then to give assistance on step-by-step -step approaches for bringing all the parts together is a really important part of our offering as well. That consulting is something that we formalized, particularly with uh, the acquisition of Calypso and then Knowledge Lens. And it's really catalyzed, I would say, our whole approach 
to working with customers to help set a plan to understand where you are on the journey, but then to be able to work with you to take those next steps and to quantify the benefits of that. And that's what this, re this week is really all about, to look at the technology, to inspire you to think about how this can actually help you in your own journeys and to have a little bit of fun on the way. So thanks for the opportunity to work with you and looking forward to a great few days. Thank you very much.